Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. I'm Mr. Norgren, and our fourth lesson is titled Creating an Identity Part 4. And you will learn how to warp text, and you will also have, learn how to use text on a path. So write those down in your sketchbook and define them on your own. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this last skill is very useful before you finalize your logo. First open Photoshop, mine's already open again, and then choose File New from the menu bar or Command N on the keyboard. Enter in 5 inches for the height and 5 for the width and a resolution of 300 and then click OK. If the grid is still visible from your last lesson, you could use the keyboard shortcut to hide it. Do you remember that one? Command apostrophe. So we'll hide that for now. Default your colors with the keyboard shortcut D, and then choose the type tool with the letter T, and click on your canvas. Type tool I already have, click on your canvas, and then type in a couple words. Whatever you want to write will be just fine. And then up uh, next you're going to choose a font and a size that will fit on your canvas. So I'll go ahead and highlight my text. This looks like it fits fairly well right now. Uh, but if you need to change it, you could change the font right up here and the size here. Remember you can click and drag right on this to make it bigger or smaller. So I'll keep it right about there. looks fine. So while this is still highlight highlighted, up in the top menu bar, there's this little icon right here with a T and a little arc, and it's Create Warp Text. So go ahead and click on that. And then for the style, you're going to choose Arc, and then you could adjust the sliders a little bit, and uh, then click OK. And I don't think this looks too good right now. This is just Photoshop's quick way of uh, arcing text. So let's go ahead and Command Z that and then try a couple different ones. So go ahead and save this for now and then we'll move on a little bit more. So Command S or File Save. I'm going to go to my documents again, go to my video lessons, and this one is now called your last name VL4 and then click Save. Okay, so with the text still highlighted, if it's not highlighted, then, oh, it's not. Let's go ahead and highlight this again. Let's go back up into the uh, warp text uh, icon and play around with some of the other ones here. You could just kind of experiment with them and see which one you like the best. And I'll just put it on one for now and play with these sliders and have a little wavy text. So sometimes they're a little bit useful, but uh, I don't use it too often. I like to customize mine a little bit more. So. I still don't think this looks very good, but uh, I just decided to show it to you. So you'll have something to compare with this next tip called path text. So go ahead and click the uh, checkbox to apply that. Hide this uh, type layer right here in the layers palette, and then uh, choose the ellipse tool. Now the ellipse tool is different than the elliptical marquee tool. This is the marquee tool that does the selection or the dancing ants. But the ellipse tool is down here with the uh, custom shape tool. So if you click and hold on this, you could see all the different shapes. We want this one, the ellipse tool with the shortcut U. Uh, so go ahead and uh, choose a light blue color from the foreground color swatch. I'll click on this little black swatch here and choose a nice light blue color and then click OK. And then on your canvas, you're going to hold down the shift key and click and drag a perfect circle. So that looks good right there. You'll notice that the uh, properties pops up. You could collapse this for now. Just click on this icon right here. And then choose the type tool. That's the letter T. And then move your I-beam cursor right next to the top left edge of your circle and click. And it is right there. You'll notice you'll get a little wave icon next to your I-beam. And if you go inside, you'll get a circle. So you could type inside the circle. You could type on the circle or you could type away for, from it. If you accidentally miss, like I did there on purpose, uh, you're gonna have to fix that. So I'll show you how to do that right now. And the way you do that is you choose the path selection tool, which is right below the type tool, this little black arrow. 
and then you're going to click on your circle to reactivate it. And right now it's not working, so what I should do is delete this layer one type layer. I'll drag it to the trash can. And now let me try clicking on that circle. There we go. We get those little handles again. Okay, so next step is to try again. And I'm going to get the type tool, letter T. Click in the top left right here, get that little wave icon. And then choose a font. I'm using Arial Rounded at 28 and that should be a good size for my name. I'm going to type in uh, my first and last name in all caps. So get the path selection tool again right down here. It's the letter A. And then you're going to click and drag right here on this little diamond next to my name. Sometimes it's in a different place though. So you're going to click and drag on that and you're going to adjust the spacing of it and this takes a little bit of practice right now it's not moving too far because I have another little icon here I can move that one out of the way and let's stretch this around a little bit and you'll notice that weird things happen like this all the time so just play around with the two little spots here and you should have some success so that flipped over again so let's try this again there's the name let me try to get this moved over now there we go now it's moving over Whoop, and it flipped again. So obviously you could see that it could be kind of frustrating sometimes. See it disappeared again. So I need to stretch this one out. And then I can move this a little more. And this is just uh, trial and error and practice too. Okay, so now that I've got it in a good spot right here, this looks good. And then another thing that you can do is highlight your text with the type tool and you could highlight this and remember the uh, tracking from the first video I could go back to the window and the character palette mine's already open right over here and I've got this little tracking icon right now so I could adjust that and make it a little bit tighter or stretch it out a little bit so that looks pretty good right there okay now we're gonna do something that's even more tricky we're gonna try to get some text at the bottom of the circle the first step you need to make is to choose the move tool, letter V. Oops, I'm glad I did that by accident. I was still in the type tool, so let's command Z that. Uh, sometimes if you try to press a keyboard shortcut and your highlighted text is, is right there, you'll get the letter instead of the tool. So go ahead and click on the move tool, or you can also just check the checkbox to make sure that your text is applied. So move tool here. And then I'm going to move my text out of the way a little bit. So I'll just drag this up a little bit higher. And now I'm going to click on the circle and then press Command T. And then up in the tool options at the top of the screen right up here for the W, the width, I'm going to change that to 125%. And then to apply that to the height, all you have to do is click on this little chain link and it'll apply it to the height too. So go ahead and press uh, return now. Sometimes you have to press it twice. There we go, got rid of that. And you may have noticed that the uh, thin black outline and those <coughs> four handles have disappeared. So you'll have to choose the path selection tool again, the letter A. And sometimes they automatically appear just by clicking on that tool. So now I can see the handles there. And uh, I'm going to choose the type tool and do something a little bit more tricky. So I'll get the type tool again. Oh, also check to see what color your uh, font is going to be. Uh, this is the foreground color, and this gets kind of confusing too, but my font color is actually up here in the tool options. So I've got the type tool there, and it's showing me that it's gonna be black, so we're okay. Okay, so go ahead and uh, click on the bottom right of your circle. And uh, that is right down here, right about here. And then type in the words photo and video with two spaces in between. And that's looking so far so good. Now go back to the path selection tool right over here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click and drag right here on this little, this little icon and you're gonna click and then drag towards the center of the circle and it's going to appear on the center of the circle. And now we'll have to adjust the spacing of it too. So while you're still in the path selection tool, 
Let's see if we can move this around a little bit. Yep, there we go. And now we're moving this into place. And it just jumped again, so be careful with where you move it. And just take a little bit of practice. Okay, once you get the placement correct, you can choose the Move tool right up here. And then move the bottom uh, text off the bottom edge a little bit right there. And this looks pretty good. Not perfect, but uh, pretty close. Not too bad. Depending on the size of the font, the size of the circle, the percentage of the circle, they're all little factors. And then I could drag this text uh, down a little bit too. And now this is looking uh, pretty good. Okay, so try to get to the correct size with some uh, placement. Remember, this is still just practice. When you do your final logo, if you wanted to have a circular logo like this, uh, you would spend a little more time to make it perfect. Okay, so next thing that you're going to do is rasterize your ellipse layer over here. Right click on ellipse, go to rasterize layer. And then you're going to choose the elliptical marquee tool right here and click and drag a circle in here. I'm going to hold down the shift key to make it perfect and it's kind of hard to get the perfect size but that looks like it's about the right size. I can now click inside this selection and move it a little bit. I could use the arrow keys to nudge it a little bit and then it looks a little bit too big so I could also transform it and the way you do that is you go up to select and down to transform selection and I could hold this shift key to keep it a perfect circle and then just make it a little bit smaller and nudge it with the arrow keys into place and now that's looking uh, all right there so press return and then you can go ahead and press delete to delete the center of that circle and command D to deselect Okay, so when it's in place, uh, go ahead and update your save document. Press Command S again. That'll update it. And oh yeah, I almost forgot. As a final step, you're going to hide all your layers except for the background layer. And then go ahead and pick a red color from the foreground color swatches. There we go, red. That's good enough. And then get the custom shape tool. And pick the heart shape. I already have mine selected. It's right down here near the bottom. There it is. The heart shape. Press return to get rid of that menu. Click and drag to draw a heart shape. Go ahead and switch your foreground color to white and get the type tool. And then you can now click inside of this shape. And you can uh, type a poem for a loved one. And if you could make it fit perfectly and make sense, uh, you get extra credit. So let's make this font a little bit smaller. And we'll start typing something. A, a poem for a loved one. And then keep typing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And try to fill that in with a poem that fits. And then it would fill in that heart shape. And this can get kind of tricky with the amount of words and how many letters the words are to make it fit just right. Okay, so that's it. Go ahead and save that and you are all finished. All right, well done. You have learned that warp text doesn't look very professional, but path text does. If you're enrolled in one of my courses, I will be showing you a live video soon on how to create a final logo. If you're watching this online, I encourage you to do the same. Uh, go ahead and just try to do one on your own. For everyone, you should continue sketching ideas in your sketchbooks. And then also, throughout your day, go ahead and start observing logos and see if you could figure out in your head how you would recreate that. If you're gonna be uh, using this logo for any final official work, I recommend that you learn how to turn it into a vector graphic in a program like Adobe Illustrator. In our next video, we're gonna learn how to uh, modify an actual photographic image. So stay tuned for that next one. And always be present, professional, and polite with all your future business encounters. Thanks and have a great day.